Okay, this is just going to be a very brief lecture on angular kinematics. And we already talked about linear kinematics. We talked about position and changes in position. Once again, the, the vector change in position is what? It's displacement. The scalar change in position is distance. Well, we had the exact same thing in a rotary fashion as we did in a linear fashion. So we have, we measure position changes, you know, in a rotary fashion, either through degrees, most, which is, once again, in, in our field, the most common, or in radians. Now, what is a radian? Just a quick review of what is a radian. Now, remember, in a circle, a uh, radius is from the center of the circle to the um, outside, the perimeter of the circle, right? It's the straight line, right? Everyone knows where a radius is. And now remember, what is the circumference of a circle? Well, that's 2 pi r, 2 pi, 2 times pi times the radius. So if you think about it, if I took the radius and I took it along the outside edge of that circle, all right, that's what a radian is. How, and as we could say, that one radian is so many degrees. It's around 56, I believe, 56.2 or something like that. And how do I come up with that number? number? Well, remember, we know that there's 2 pi r radians in the 360 degrees here, all right? So if we know 2 and we know pi is 3.14159, blah, 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 it keeps going on forever or never, ever, right? So we know that there are 2 pi radians in the circle, which in the 360 degrees, which means we also know that it's pi radians, pi times the radius, pi radians in 180 degrees, or pi over 2 for 90 degrees. Uh, when it comes to actually doing the math for quantitative biomechanical analysis, uh, biomechanists will actually use radians. Once again, in our field, in, in, in coaching and training, we'll most commonly just use degrees. All right, let's put that aside now. So we talked about position. We can measure position, and we can know the difference between displacement and distance. Now remember, when it came to displacement, linear displacement, it was from the start to end position. So let's say I move my arm from here to here and then back to here, which I would say is that this is about a 90 degree turn and then back again. Well, if I measure from start to end from here to here, I had a displacement of zero degrees. I didn't move. Now, let's see if I look at this movement once again, it's zero degrees of angular displacement but the entire angular distance I cover would be 90 plus 90, which would be 180. So, well, the same concepts, but instead of talking linearly, now we're take, talking rotary or angular. Same thing, we talked about velocity, and we talked about speed. Well, what is angular velocity? Angular velocity is, once again, how many degrees per second of displacement over time, right? It's, it's, it's angular displacement over time. And once again, what's angular acceleration? It's the change in angular velocity over time. So once again, we can see this, this direct one-to-one -one correlation of linear to angular, except linear, once again, straight line. Angular, we're measuring it in degrees or radians, right? Simple as that. One thing I would like to point out, though, is when we look at something going in a rotary fashion, notice the actual linear distance definitely changes depending on how far you are along this one we're called lever right now. And believe me, we're going to get a lot more into levers. So if I move from here to here, if I move that 90 degrees, you can see how much distance my fingertips are traveling. Well, say right next to my elbow, this little point right here isn't moving very much. And also look at the difference in, once again, angular velocity here. If I go from here to here, look how fast that moves, how, how quickly my fingertips move versus how quickly this little point on my forearm moves next to my elbow. Not very fast. And that's going to come in a lot later when we talk about rotational inertia and torque and things like that. But once again, that gets more on the kinematic side. So for right now, just realize that there's that correlation between displacement, linear displacement, and angular displacement. Linear velocity, angular velocity, linear acceleration, angular acceleration.